Hello, this is Anthony Arroyo from the AbletonCookbook.com, and today we're going to be talking about mid-side EQing. And what mid-side EQing is, is um, when you EQ the middle of, the, of a stereo signal uh, separately from the sides. Uh, and so you do this for a couple of reasons. Um, the first is that it makes it easier to adjust the, the volumes of different instruments separately, but as a, as a mix, as opposed to um, going back into the mix and, and changing the, uh, the levels of the actual instruments, you can um, do something sort of approximating a, a mastering type um, procedure on the master track and it also allows you to um, EQ the middle which in a lot of dance music um, has the kick and the snare it allows you to EQ that a little bit so it has uh, more punch to it um, so first uh, I'd like to point out that actually Ableton comes already with this effect called EQ8 that if you notice here actually already has a um, mid-side option, so it'll allow you to pick between the side and the middle right here, so M being middle and S being side. Um, I do it a little bit differently. It's kind of a little bit more roundabout, but I do it um, using an instrument, or an effect rack, rather, uh, just to give you a little bit more flexibility, uh, because I find that this kind of is, is cumbersome. I like to have two separate chains to do it, um, the middle and the side. That way, if I want to add anything besides the um, the EQ, I can also add effects or whatever processing I want only on the middle and the side. Um, so I'll show you how I do that right now. So for purposes of demonstration, I have these two clips right here that we're going to be working with. So for the purpose of demonstration, we're going to use that. Um, so what we're going to do first is we're going to do we're going to do all this processing actually on the master track, and I always do this. I always have a mid side EQ on the master track um, when I'm finishing up the mix. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to get an empty audio effect track, drop it on the master right here. So for all these effects, actually, if you um, drag the top. Uh, one not the, from the drop down menu, you're gonna get just the default. So for both instrument racks and effect racks, you're just gonna get an empty rack. Um, so we're gonna enter the chain editing window here. Control click or right click and create chain. So we're gonna do that twice. I'm gonna name these chains middle and side, respectively, respectively rather. Okay. And first, we're going to um, isolate the middle of the signal. So the way that we're going to do this is we are going to go down to Utility and get what is called Mono. I'm going to drop that so that we just get the middle of the signal as opposed to the sides. So you can hear. Well, actually, I'll demo in a second. And then, actually, and then after that, now that the middle has been isolated, we're going to put in an EQ8 but just on this chain. So you can see this chain, the side chain is still uh, empty. So we're gonna do the same thing for the side chain as well, but we're gonna use the utility again, and we are going to put this width at 200, and that's only gonna have the, um, the edges of the stereo signal, so the stuff on the sides. And we're gonna do the same thing, we're gonna put an EQ8 after that. So now between middle and side, we have two different um, chains. So the, the signal is going to get split up and it's going to be processed by two different EQs. So actually, why don't we even rename these EQs? Um, that way we don't have any confusion. Okay. So. Now what we're going to do is we're going to listen to this again and 
for, and we're gonna solo these different uh, elements. So let's just do this again. So now, getting less stuff on the sides, you could also do the opposite and just solo the sides, right? So you'll hear. So you can see there's a difference in the, what's actually, what part of the signal is is there. And generally on the side, you're gonna have a lot more stuff in the higher frequencies. And um, at least the way that I mix things, and I think that this is a pretty common way to mix sort of dancey electronic music or just electronic music in general is have the higher signals off to the side. Also, um, like reverb tails and delay, things like that are gonna be off to the side. Whereas the kick and the snare are gonna be in the middle. So now that we are processing these um, elements of the signal differently, we're gonna wanna isolate and boost different parts. So for the middle in particular, we're gonna wanna definitely boost um, the kick drum. So, or the kick or the bass, it's kind of up to you. So the way I usually find where that's sitting, I don't really have a scientific method for it. I just peak this up like this, just, and I maybe lower the, or raise the resonance so that this is a lot, a little steeper. And then I just sweep it through the frequency range to see where it's gonna have the most effect. So let's listen to that. So there we're actually getting a little bit of a boost on the kick drum right there. Um, and I guess at this, you know, when I made this beat, I wasn't very good about um, tuning the kick to the bass line. Uh, that is something that you can do so that you don't have, um, so that they're in the same frequency range, but I, I didn't really do that this time. So you would have to decide if you'd like to kick, boost the kick or boost the, the, the bass because they're not going to be at the same frequency. So, um, and we're not going to get too deep into this right now, but I will tell you that you're not going to want... To, so when you're boosting low frequencies, you can have a very steep boost. So the Q is the, is the resonance, actually. Um, I wouldn't recommend doing that higher because that will be really piercing on the ear. So that's I, just a rule of thumb. I make it steeper as it goes to the left and a little bit uh, more, uh, I guess, uh, it's the it's the it's the it's the a little bit more gradual on the right. So now that I've boosted I have about 45 right here, remember that um, uh, octaves are gonna be doubling, right? So we're gonna want it boosted here and then maybe a couple octaves up um, just to make sure that we're getting all of, the, all of the harmonics from that. So let's see, 45, 90 might be a little bit much. Why don't we do it at 180 here? So I'll just actually type this in here, 180, and then raise the gain like that. And once again, make it steep. Let's see. You can hear what happens when you turn this off. So it's definitely gonna have more punch with that engaged. So also besides that, you're gonna to wanna to maybe boost the snare. So let's do that again. Same thing. you know it's not really hard and fast because actually a snare is has things going on in a few different frequency ranges um so this is where you can actually make the snare sound a little bit different if you'd like by either boosting the bottom which is going to be more of like the 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 thudding of the snare or if you if you want to make it sound a little bit duller because sometimes that's cool you want to make it sound a little bit tighter and sharper you can boost a little higher um in the range but that's really up to you. So this is, um, either way, just know that the middle, we're gonna be wanting boosting the, the kick, bass, and snare. And that's gonna help you have a little bit more thump in your mix. Okay, so let's do the side now. Listen to the side. But you can see, you can hear that there's still some bass going on. Um, specifically not the actual kick, 
but the actual base. So I'm going to roll that all off. In fact, if I could tell you one thing, I would tell you that you should avoid having, I mean, should, you could do whatever you want, but I'd recommend avoiding, uh, a one way to cut the muddiness of a mix is actually to make sure you don't have any base hanging around on the, on the edges. Um, because it's going to be, what you're going to want on the sides is this sort of high stuff. There's also a way to make it, make it sound like there's more air in your mix. Um, because that's actually where a lot of, uh, uh, reverb tails and stuff like that are actually in these higher frequencies. So, so you can hear there's some there's some delaying stuff going on. Um, I kind of want to boost that so that it's going to make it sound a little bit wider and also have a little bit more sparkle to it. I would say. So let's listen to the whole thing together now. And you can see that on the sides, you can really hear the spark a little bit more. So I would say think about, um, and, and when you're mixing as well, that's also remember to distribute that stuff on the side and it's gonna be a little bit more effective. And that way you don't have um, too much reverb in the middle and you don't have too much um, muddiness on the sides because it's gonna make it, it's gonna really hurt the clarity of the mix. So let's listen to this right here and hear the difference. So definitely you're going to hear, it, it, to me it sounds a lot brighter and it sounds a little uh, better defined than without the midside EQ. But this is a good go-to to add a little bit of clarity to your mix uh, at the end if you um, if you don't want to go out and get it mastered by somebody. So this is this helpful.